So your test is on 4-1 to 4-5. This first sheet goes over all of your, um, like, ins, ins and outs of your 4-1 to 4-3. So all of the stuff that you should know. First thing that we're going to start with is compound interest. Remember, with your compound interest, you have two different formulas. You have this one that's in the middle. This A is equal to P times 1 plus R over N to the power of N times T. And then you also have A is equal to P times E to the power of R times T. If you're using compound interest, that's compounded annually, semi-annually, quarterly, monthly, daily, weekly, any of those, you're going to use that A is equal to P times 1 plus R over N to the power of N times T, where N is your compounded annually, semi-annually, so on. If it's annually, your N is going to be 1. Semi-annually, you'll be 2. Quarterly will be 4. Monthly will be 12. Weekly would be 52. That's not there for you, but like I said, weekly will be 52, and daily would be 365. Your P is the principal. It's the amount that you start with or the, the amount that you're investing. Your rate has to be in decimal form. So remember to turn a percent to a decimal, you move that decimal point two places to the left. And then your time has to be in years. So for example, if it was six months, that's half a year. So your T would be 0.5 or one half. If it's just compounded continuous, you would use that A is equal to P times E to the power of R times T. Once again, that P is the amount that you're investing. Your E is going to be used using your calculator. The R is your rate in decimal form, and T is your time in years. Next, we move on to graphs of exponential and logarithmic functions. Your exponential functions, when your base is greater than 1, so your base is greater than 1, it's going to go up from left to right. If your base is less than 1 but greater than 0, it's going to go down from left to right. So keep that in mind while you look at these. Your domain for these automatically is all real numbers. So from negative infinity to positive infinity. Your range you will find once you find your horizontal asymptote. Remember your horizontal asymptote with these is whatever is plus or minus a number at the end, that vertical shift up or down, that is what your horizontal asymptote will be. Then um, vertical shift up, down. Okay. Use that with your range. Your range is up and down, so your y values that are covered from that graph. If you have a reflection, be careful with the way your range is going. So make sure you represent that reflection with the line first, and then look to see, is it going up or is it going down? Y-intercept, always the point zero comma something. Plug in zero where your x is, simplify, that'll give you your y value, so it's just zero comma that y value. On your test, if you do not give your y-intercept as an ordered pair, it's going to be marked wrong. So make sure that's given as an ordered pair. For your log functions, your log functions automatically look similar to this. So with these, your range is all real numbers. So from negative infinity to positive infinity for your range. Your domain has to do with your vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote is when you take the expression that's in your parentheses, set it equal to zero, and solve for x. That will be the x value also in your domain. Then look to see which way your lines are going. So if you're going to the right, you're going to go from that number from your vertical um, asymptote to infinity. If you're going to the left, it goes from negative infinity up to that number that's in your, your vertical asymptote. Remember with these, if you do not represent your reflections, it's going to mess you up. So with these graphs of exponential and log functions, make sure you pay attention to your negatives. Next thing we're going to look at is expanding and condensing log form. When you condense log form, remember addition becomes multiplication, subtraction becomes division. 
your coefficient becomes your exponent. When you expand, your multiplication becomes addition, your division becomes subtraction, and your exponent becomes your coefficient. When you are solving these log functions or these log equations, remember that log and exponents are inverses. e to the power of x and ln are also inverses. Your id function, you're isolating it, then solving it. So with these, remember that you cannot take the log or the ln of a negative number. And with them, you must check. If we look at the second page, you're getting into your examples where you're just condensing or expanding. If we look at the one to the far right corner, we have the log of AB to the second power. This power, we said, is going to turn into a coefficient, so it's going to go to the front. And it's going to become 2 times log A plus, I'm sorry, log A times B. You could also distribute that 2 to the power of the a and the b to where it is log a squared times b squared. It's the same exact thing. From here, you are going to separate that multiplication with addition. So this is going to become 2 times log a plus log b. That 2 then gets distributed to both of the logs, so where it is 2 log a plus 2 log b. If you did it to where the second way we started it, where it's log a squared times b squared, this would then separate to be log a squared times, or sorry, plus log b squared. And then those powers just become coefficients. So you get the same exact answer. So it's 2 log a plus 2 log b. So it's the same thing, just a different way of doing it. For example 5, you have log x over y to the fifth power. Your division means subtraction. So this is going to be log x minus log y to the fifth power. That power becomes a coefficient. So that's just log x minus 5 log y. For number 6, you have log x, y, z to the second power. So we're going to separate this multiplication with addition. So it's going to give you log x plus log y plus log z to the power of 2. That power has to become your coefficient. So it's going to be log x plus log y plus 2 log z. For example, 7, you have log 6x plus log 6y plus 6 log 6 of z. Your power or your sorry coefficient of that six has to become your power first before you do anything else so this is going to give you log six of x plus log six of y plus log six of z to the sixth power now you realize that you have addition between each of these so you are going to multiply the x the y and the z to the sixth power because all of your bases on that log are six so this is going to be log 6 of x, y, z to the 6th power. For number 8, we have log 3 of 12 plus log 3 of 7 plus 4 log 3 of 5. First thing, just like the last one, that 4 becomes your power on that 5. So you're going to have log 3 of 12 plus log 3 of of 7 plus log 3 of 5 to the fourth power. Because you have addition between all of these, you can multiply the 12, the 7, and the 5 to the fourth power because you have log 3, and 3 is your base on all of these. So it's just going to give you log 3 
of 12 times 7 times 5 to the fourth power. And then you can leave it in this form. You don't actually have to multiply out the 12 times 7 or the 5 to the fourth power. For number 9, you have 3 log 2 of 3 minus 12 log 2 of 7. Remember, the subtraction means division. However, you do have coefficients on both of those logs, so they have to become powers first. So that 3 becomes the power on the 3, the 12 becomes the power on the 7. So that gives you log 2 of 3 to the third power minus log 2 of 7 to the twelfth power. We said that subtraction represents division, so that because our base of 2 on each of those logs are the same, we're going to have log 2 of 3 cubed over 7 to the twelfth power. And again, you can leave it as that 3 cubed and that 7 to the twelfth power. You don't need to multiply it out. For number 10, you have log 7 of 2 to the third power over 5 squared. That division represents subtraction, so we'll rewrite this as log 7 of 2 to the third power minus log, two, log 7, I'm sorry, log 7 of 5 squared. You have powers on both of these numbers, so they become coefficients. So this is going to give us 3 times log 7 of 2 minus 2 log 7 of 5. For number 11, you have log 5 of a cubed over b cubed. So this division means subtraction, so it's just going to give us log 5 of a to the third power minus log 5 of b to the third power. Those powers become coefficients. So this is going to be 3 times log 5 to the power of a minus 3 times log 5 to the power sorry, 3 times log 5 of A minus 3 times log 5 of B. For number 12, we have log 4 of 12 times 7 squared all raised to the fourth power. First thing we do with this power is we bring it to the front. So this is going to become 4 times log 4 of 12 times 7 squared. From here, we're going to separate that multiplication with addition. So it's going to be 4 times log 4 of 12 plus log 4 of 7 squared. The 2 as your power on that 7 goes to the front of that log 4 of 7. So this is going to give you 4 times log 4 of 12 plus 2 times log 4 of 7. For number 13, we have negative 14 plus 3 times e to the power of x is equal to 11. We know that we see that that e to the power of x is in our equation. We know that ln cancels out e. So with this, first isolate that e to the power of x. You're going to move that 14 over first, so we're going to add it to both sides. We have 3 times e to the power of x is equal to 11 plus 14, which is 25. From here, we can divide each side by that 3 to get that e to the power of x by itself. So it's going to give us e to the power of x is equal to 25 over 3. From here, when we started this, we said that ln cancels out e. So if you rewrite this to where you have ln times e to the power of x is equal to ln times 25 over 3, that ln and that e cancel out to where you just have x, and then you'll use your calculator to do the ln of 25 divided by 3, which is 2.120263536. If we round to the third decimal place, we're going to have 2.120. For 
for number 14. We have negative 6 plus ln times 3x is equal to 0. So we have that ln. We know E cancels out ln. So first, isolate that ln. We're going to move that 6 over by adding it to both sides. This gives us ln of 3x is equal to 6. We said, once again, E cancels out ln. So this is going to become E to the power of ln of 3x is equal to e to the power of 6. e and ln cancel each other out, so that's just 3x is equal to e to the power of 6. To get x by itself, we're going to divide each side by 3. So this, in our calculator, we're going to do e gives us to the power of 6, then go down, you can hit enter, and then divide that number by 3. And you should get 134.4762645. If you round to the third decimal place, that's 134.476. For number 15, you have log of 3x plus 1 is equal to 2. You have log here. What is the base on that log? There isn't 1, so it's automatically 10. So since your base is 10 on that log, you want your base to be 10 on both sides to cancel out that log. So that means that you're going to do or rewrite this to be 10 to the power of log 10 of 3x plus 1 is equal to 10 to the second power. The 10 and the log 10, since it has the same base, cancel each other out to where you're just working with 3x plus 1 is equal to 10 squared, which is 100. We're going to move that 1 over by subtracting it from each side. This gives us 3x is equal to 99. And then we divide each side by the 3 and get that x is equal to 33. Remember with these two, you could pl be plugging these in and checking them. Just use your calculator if you need to. Remember if your log has a different base of 10, you can't use your calculator for that. For example, 16, we have log 3 of 2x plus 1 is equal to 2. Again, our base is 3 here, so we want that base to be 3 on both sides. So we're going to rewrite this as 3 to the power of log 3 of 2x plus 1 is equal to 3 to the second power. That 3 cancels out that log 3, so you just have 2x plus 1 on that left side, and that 3 squared is 9. If we subtract that 1 over, we have 2x is equal to 8. Then divide each side by the 2, and you have that x is 4. For 17, you have ln x minus ln 3 is equal to 4. We know that when we are subtracting, it represents division, so we're going to rewrite this as ln of x over 3 is equal to 4. What cancels out ln? E. So this is going to be rewritten as e to the power of ln of x divided by 3 is equal to e to the fourth power. We said e cancels out ln, so that's just x over 3 is equal to e to the fourth power. We would divide by 3, so the opposite of that is multiplying by 3. So we're going to multiply each side by 3. So in our calculator, we can just do e to the power of 4, whatever we get from that, multiply that by 3. And that should give you, if you round it correctly, 163.794. For number 18, you have log 5 of x minus 10 is equal to 2. That log has a base of 5. So make that base of 5 be the base on both sides. We can rewrite this as 5 to the power of log 5 of x minus 10 is equal to 5 to the second power. Your 5 cancels out your log 5. It's where you just have x minus 10 on the left side of that equal sign. And that 5 to the second power is 25. We move the 10 over by adding it to both sides. And we have x is equal to to 35. Again, if you wanted to check this, plug it in to the original equation. 
Log 5 of 35 minus 10 is log 5 of 25. 5 to what power is 25? It's 2, so you know this is correct. For number 19, we have 2 times ln 3x is equal to 4. So the first thing you're going to do here is divide each side by that 2, because that 2 is in front of the ln, and you want to isolate that ln. So divide each side by that 2 to start. You're going to have ln of 3x is equal to 2. E cancels out ln, so that's going to be rewritten as e to the power of ln of 3x is equal to e to the second power. E and ln cancel out, so you just have 3x is equal to e squared. Divide each side by that 3. Use your calculator. e to the power of 2 divided by 3 gives us 2.463 if rounded correctly. For number 20, you have 3 to the power of x is equal to 500. That 3 to the power of x gives you the base of 3. So can we take 500 and rewrite it as 3 to the power of something in order to cancel out that 3 to the power of x to where you're just working with the x? No. So because you cannot rewrite 500 as 3 to the power of something, we're going to take the log of both sides. So we're going to have log 3 to the power of x is equal to log 500. To bring that power down, we move it to the front of that log. So that's x times log 3 is equal to log 500. To get x by itself, it's being multiplied by that log 3, so divide each side by log 3. You'll need your calculator for this one. And in your calculator, just do log 500, parentheses, divided by log 3, close parentheses. And that gives you 5.657. For number 21, you have 5 to the power of x plus 2 is equal to 4. 5 is a prime number. Can you write 4 as 5 to the power of something? No. So there's no way of canceling out your base. So you are going to take the log of both sides. So that's going to be log of 5 to the power of x plus 2 is equal to log 4. That entire power of x plus 2 goes to the front of that log. So that's x plus 2 times log 5 is equal to log 4. Because that x plus 2 is being multiplied by that log 5, we're going to divide each side by log 5. So let's cancel. That means that we have x plus 2 is equal to log 4 divided by log 5. You want x, not x plus 2. So, so subtract the 2 over. Use your calculator. Do log 4 divided by log 5. Hit enter and then subtract 2 from that. And that gives you negative 1.139. For 22, we have 8 to the power of x is equal to 1,000. So once again, 8 is 2 to the third power. Can you write 1,000 as 2 to the power of something? Yeah. You can't. So take the log of both sides. This is going to be log 8 to the power of x is equal to log 1,000. That x goes in front of that log 8, so that's x times log 8 is equal to log 1,000. From here, divide each side by log 8. Use your calculator. Round to the third decimal place. Log 1,000 divided by log 8. Rounded to the third decimal place. Gives you 3.322. For 23, we have 2 times e to the power of 2x minus 5 times e to the power of x minus 3 is equal to 0. I don't like working with the e to the power of x's, so I'm going to rewrite this to have y represent e to the power of x. So this becomes 2y squared minus 5y minus 3 is equal to 0. Your 2 
times negative 3 is negative 6. Your factors of negative 6 that add up to be negative 5 are 1 and negative 6. So we can rewrite this as 2y squared plus y minus 6y minus 3 is equal to 0. And then factor by grouping. Your 2y plus, or sorry, 2y squared plus y groups your negative 6y minus 3 groups. You're going to factor out a y from the 2y plus y, 2y squared plus y, sorry. And then you're going to factor out a negative 3 from the negative 6y minus 3. This is going to leave you with y minus 3 times 2y plus 1 is equal to 0. If we set both of these equal to 0 and solve them, we are going to get that y is equal to 3 and y is equal to negative 1 half. We said from the very beginning that y is equal to e to the power of x. So that means that we are going to have e to the power of x is equal to 3, and e to the power of x is equal to negative 1 half. In order to cancel out that e, you multiply it by ln. So multiply each side of each of these equations by ln. For the e to the power of x is equal to 3, the ln and the e cancel to where you have x is equal to ln 3. If you use your calculator, ln 3 rounded to the third decimal place gives you that x is equal to 1.099. For your other one, however, that e to the power of x gets multiplied by ln, so it's ln times e to the power of x is equal to ln of negative 1 half. Yes, that ln and that e cancel out to where you just have x, However, you cannot take the ln or the log of a negative number. So because that negative is there, you cannot work with this one. The only answer that you have is that 1.099. For number 24, we have 6 times e to the power of 2x minus 11 times e to the power of x minus 10 is equal to 0. We're going to do the same thing with this one that we did with 23. So we're going to rewrite your e to the power of x to be y. So this is going to be 6 times y, or, well, yeah, 6y squared minus 11y minus 10 is equal to 0. Your 6 times negative 10 gives you negative 60. Your factors of negative 60 that add up to be negative 11 are, you have 1 and 60, 2 and 30, 3 and 10, 4 and 15. So if the 15 is negative and the 4 is positive, that gives you your negative 11. So it's going to be rewritten as 6y squared plus 4y minus 15y minus 10 is equal to 0. We're going to factor this by grouping. Factor out a 2y from the first, factor out a negative 5 from the second. This leaves us with 2y minus 5 times 3y plus 2 is equal to 0. So your y is going to be 5 over 2, and y is negative 2 over 3. So if we rewrite these to be e to the power of x is equal to 5 over 2, and e to the power of x is equal to negative 2 over 3, we're going to rewrite both of these to be ln times e to the power of x. So I'm just going to move up here. So ln times e to the power of x is equal to 5 over 2, and ln times e to the power of x. Oh, sorry, this is ln 5 over 2. ln 5 over 2. Let's do this one first. Your ln, your e cancel, so that's x is equal to ln of 5 divided by 2, which if you round correctly to the third decimal place, that gives you x is equal to 0 0.916. If you finish your second one, you're going to have ln times e to the power of x is equal to ln times negative two-thirds. You cannot take the ln of a negative number. So this one you're not going to work with. So you just have one solution with this, which is the 0 0.916. If we look at 25 we have 2 times e to the power of 0.5x is equal to 45. First thing we're going to do here is divide each side by the 2 
in order to isolate that e to the power of 0.5x. From here, we want to get rid of that e, so we're going to take the ln of both sides. So it's going to become ln times e to the power of 0.5x is equal to ln times 45 over 2. ln and e cancel, so that's 0.5x is equal to ln of 45 divided by 2. That 0.5 is being multiplied by the, that x, so divide each side by that 0 0.5. So in your calculator, you're going to do ln of 45 divided by 2 divided by 0 0.5, round to the third decimal place. That gives you that x is equal to 6.227. For 26, you have log 7 of 3 plus log 7 of x is equal to log 7 of 32. We said that multiplication is represented by addition, so we're going to rewrite this as log 7 of 3 times x is equal to log 7 of 32. Now, your base is the same on both sides, which is 7, so those logs of 7 can cancel out, and you just have to work with the 3x is equal to 32. You can divide each side by that 3 to get that x by itself, and you get that x is 32 over 3. For 27, you have 12 times 1 minus 4 to the power of x is equal to 18. Now this one you don't have an ln, an e, or a log in it. You just have that power of x. So you're working with an exponential function. First, isolate that 4 to the power of x first. So divide each side by that 12. This will leave you with 1 minus 4 to the power of x is equal to 3 over 2. From here, move your 1 over, subtract it from each side. If you're subtracting a whole number from a fraction, you need like denominators. So 1 turns into 2 over 2. So that's just negative 4 to the power of x is equal to 1 half. I don't like the negative in front of the 4 to the power of x, so I'm going to divide each side by that negative 1. So I have 4 to the power of x is equal to negative 1 half. Now, if you take the log of both sides, since you can't turn 4 into a power, that's the same thing as the same base to a power to get you that negative 1 half. I'm going to take the log of both sides, so it's going to be log 4 to the power of x is equal to log negative one-half. Now, at this moment, you should see that you are taking the log of a negative number, which you cannot do. So because that negative is there, there is no solution for this one. Anytime you're taking the log or the ln of a negative number, it's no solution. You, you can't do it. That's why with those ones that were above this, when you took the ln of that negative one-half in number 23 and that ln of that negative two-thirds in number 24, we crossed it out because it's not, it's, it'll never work. If you, even if you use your calculator and you try to do log negative one-half, it's going to give you an error. For number 28, you have log 2 of x plus 5 minus log 2 of x minus 2 is equal to 3. Your x minus, or sorry, x plus 5 and your x minus 2 are going to be divided by one another because you have a negative between those two logs. So this is going to get rewritten as log 2 of x plus 5 over x minus 2 is equal to 3. You have the base of 2 on that log. So in order to cancel out that log, you want your base to be 2 on both sides. So that's going to cancel out the 2 and the log 2 to where you just have x plus 5 over x minus 2 is equal to 2 to the third power, which is 8. Get the denominator out of that fraction. Multiply each side of that equation by x minus 2. This leaves you with x plus 5 is equal to 8x minus 16. I'm going to move that x over first by subtracting it from both sides. So it gives me 5 is equal to 7x minus 16. 
Then I add the 16 over, and that gives me 7x is equal to 21. From here, just divide each side by 7, and you get that x is equal to 3. For 29, you have 4 times ln of 2x plus 3 is equal to 11. We're going to start this one by dividing each side by that 4 since it's being multiplied by that ln. That's going to give you ln times 2x plus 3 is equal to 11 over 4. We said we cancel out the ln by multiplying it by e, so it's going to be e to the power of ln of 2x plus 3 is equal to e to the power of 11 over 4. e cancels out ln, so that's just 2x plus 3 is equal to e to the power of 11 divided by 4. We're going to move the 3 over first, so we're going to subtract it from both sides. That gives us 2x is equal to e to the power of 11 over 4 minus 3 Let's do it this way. Put this in parentheses and then minus 3. Okay. From here, we're going to divide each side by that 2. So the whole thing gets divided by 2. So in your calculator, you could do the second ln to the power of 11 divided by 4. Hit enter. Minus 3. Hit enter. And divide that number by 2. If you round to the third decimal place correctly, this gives you 6.321. For number 30, or sorry, 29, you have log x minus log 6 is equal to 2 log 4. The x and the 6 get divided by one another since subtraction separates those two logs. So this is going to become log x over 6 is equal to 2 log 4. Now, you can move the 2 to be the power on that 4, but we're going to look at this. Actually, no, we're, we are going to do that. We're going to move the 2 to be the power on the 4. So that's log of 4 to the second power. Now, when you look at these two logs on both sides, they have the same bases. They don't have one, so it's automatically 10, but it's the same on both sides. So you can cancel them out and just work with the x over 6 is equal to 4 squared, which is 16. Multiply each side by 6 to get x by itself. And 16 times 6 gives us that x is equal to 96. For 30, we have 1 third log 2 of x plus 5 is equal to 7. So again, undo your addition or subtraction first before you undo that multiplication or division. We're going to move that 5 over, so subtract it from each side. That gives us one-third log 2 of x is equal to 2. To move that one-third over, you multiply by the reciprocal, which is 3. That gives you log 2 of x is equal to 6. Your base on that log is 2. To cancel it out, you're going to have to have your base be 2 on both sides. So if your base is 2 on both sides, that 2 and that log 2 cancel out to give you x. And 2 to the 6th power is 64. For 31, it gives you 4 log 5 of x plus 1 is equal to 4.8. We're going to start this one by dividing each side by 4. That x plus 1 is in parentheses. Again, we cannot separate the 1 from the x. It has to be with the x because it's in parentheses. So the only thing we can move over first is by dividing by 4. So this is going to give us log 5 of x plus 1 is equal to 1.2. Our base on that log is 5. So we want the base on both sides to be 5 in order to cancel out that log. So we're going to rewrite this as log five, or sorry, 5 to the power of log 5 of x plus 1 is equal to 5 to the power of 1.2. 5 cancels out that log 5 to where you just have x plus 1 is equal to 5 to the power of 1.2.
move your one over, subtract it from each side. You can use your calculator to do five to the power of 1.2 minus one. And that gives you, to round to the third decimal place, 5.899. For 32, you have log 2 of x plus log 2 of 3 is equal to 3. Addition, rewrite as multiplication. So that's going to be log 2 of x times 3 is 3x is equal to 3. Get rid of that log. Your base is 2. So that's 2 to the power of log 2 of 3x is equal to 2 to the third power. 2 and log 2 cancel out, so 3x is equal to 8, because 2 to the third power is 8. We divide by 3. We can keep it in fraction form. x is equal to 8 over 3. For number 33, you have 2 times log 4 of x minus log 4 of x minus 1 is equal to 1. First thing you're going to have to do here is rewrite that 2 as the power on that x. So this is going to be log 4 of x squared minus log 4 of x minus 1 is equal to 1. We have subtraction here, so we're going to divide. This is going to be log 4 of x squared over x minus 1 is equal to 1. You have the log with a base of 4. So in order to get rid of that log, you need your base of 4 to be the base on both sides. So this is going to become 4 to the power of log 4 of x squared over x minus 1 is equal to 4 to the first power. 4 cancels out the log 4, so you just have x squared over x minus 1, and 4 to the first power is 4. To get rid of the x minus 1 in the denominator, multiply it by each side. This gives you x squared is equal to, if you distribute that 4, 4x minus 4. I like with my, I like my x squared to be positive, so I'm going to move the 4x and the 4 over by subtracting the 4x and adding the 4. So this is going to give me x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 0. I'm going to factor this. My factors of 4 that adds to be negative 4 or negative 2 and negative 2. So this gives me x minus 2 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. If we set them both equal to 0 and we solve, we get that x is equal to 2 for both of them. Check, check it. Plug it in. 2 times log 4 of 2. 4 to what power is 2? It's 1 half. So 2 times 1 half is 1. Minus 4 log 4 of 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. Log 4 of 1 is 0. 1 minus 0 is equal to 1. Gives you a true statement. So x is equal to 2 is definitely your answer. For 34, you have 3 times e to the power of 2x plus 5 times e to the power of x is equal to 28. I'm going to move that 28 over first by subtracting it on both sides. So that way my equation is equal to 0. This is going to give me 3 e to the power of 2x plus 5 times e to the power of x minus 28 is equal to 0. I don't like the way that e to the power of x is, so I'm going to rewrite it as y. So this is going to be 3, to the, 3 times y squared plus 5y minus 28 is equal to 0. You do not have a greatest common factor, so multiply your a and your c term. 3 times negative 28 gives you negative 84. 3 times negative 28 is negative 24. Oh, sorry, 84. You're looking for the factors that give you 5. So 84 is 1 and 84. 2 and 42. 3 and 28. 4 and 21. 5 does not go into it evenly. 6 goes in 14 times. Uh, 84 divided by 7 is 12. 
if the 12 is positive and the 7 is negative, that gives you positive 5. So this is going to get rewritten as 3y squared minus 7y plus 12y minus 28 is equal to 0. We're going to factor this by grouping. Factor out a y from the first. Factor out a 4 from the second. So this gives us y plus 4 times 3y minus 7 is equal to 0. If I set both of them equal to 0 and I solve, I get that y is equal to negative 4 and y is equal to 7 over 3. If we change out that y to be e of x, e to the power of x, we're going to have e to the power of x is equal to negative 4 and e to the power of x is equal to 7 over 3. To get rid of that e to the power of x, we're going to multiply it by ln. So ln times e to the power of x is equal to ln of negative 4, as well as ln times e to the power of x is equal to ln of 7 over 3. For the 1 on the left here, your ln and your e cancel out to where you just have x is equal to ln of negative 4. You cannot do the ln of a negative number, so that one's not going to give you a solution. However, the one on the right, the ln and the e cancel, so you have x is equal to ln of 7 divided by 3, which, if you round to the third decimal place correctly, you get that x is equal to 0 0.847.